morning and welcome to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. And we welcome you to Talk of the Town for this Monday, September 28th. I'm Gary Stevens. We'll be open line following the 10 and 11 o'clock news blocks. Patty Vanderberg will be joining us in about an hour with what's new around Howland. We join in our 1030 segment by State Representative Brad Slob. And in our first half hour, it's a pleasure to welcome her once again. She is with the Lakeshore Home Builders Association. Sue Sherman is on the other side of our Zoom connection. Sue, good morning. And we morning. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, I don't want to say you're, I don't want to, I don't want to say you're, you're spoofing me, but uh if that's the background of an actual Lakeshore Parade of Homes house, you're in a very luxurious area. I have a funny feeling that's a, that's a, a, a photo behind you. It is. It is. <laughs> Just getting in the mood. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, we will, by the way, have the video of this conversation uh, up in our uh, available to you um, listening uh, and online at whtc.com we'll put a link a little bit later on but it is the annual lakeshore home builders association parade of homes and unlike previous years when perhaps we chat before the parade of homes started it's already underway that's right it started last weekend but it's going to continue uh this week wednesday thursday friday and saturday so there's still plenty of time to get out and see the homes Tell us a little bit about this Parade of Homes, the purposes behind it, what, uh, if you can, sort of go back to when it started, and, and, how, and what does, you know, what does this Parade of Homes really do to sort of help out the uh, home industry in our area? So this is, I think, our 52nd year of the Parade of Homes, so it's a, a long tradition here in the Lakeshore area. And it's an opportunity for our members of the uh, Home Builders Association to show their very best work. So um, you can tour both new homes and a couple of remodels. And it's just an opportunity to see what the builders can do and also to just see what, what the latest trends are. So people will go if they're thinking about building down the line or if they just wanna do some improvements to their homes, it's a great way to see what's going on in the industry. The Lakeshore Parade of Homes spotlights, for the most part, newer homes, but you mentioned remodeled homes as well, because after a while, there's not much room left to make a new home, I don't think, so you, you gotta do some remodeling. That's true, and remodeling has really um, you know, taken off recently. Even with the shutdown, I think people spent a little bit more time at home, and so people are thinking about how they use their home and, and maybe if they can add some details, you know, a, a new patio or new deck or home office, that kind of thing. So there is a lot of remodeling going on right now, as well as building. Uh, tell us a little bit about this year's Parade of Homes, how many homes are, are participating and some of the highlights of some of the homes that will be on display, this, uh, which started last week and runs through the third. Yeah, so I haven't gotten to all of them yet, but I have gotten to quite a few. Um, we have a dozen homes that are able to be visited in person, as well as three that we're calling virtual only. They're not available in person, but um, they are available on our website. And this year, something new is that all of the homes have a virtual element. So people have the opportunity to come in person, but if maybe they're not comfortable with that, they can go online and they're, um, it's like a 3D dollhouse that you can literally click through on your computer and explore, you know, walk through and, and check out each of the rooms. So that's something that we've had in the past, but not every home opted to do that. This year, all, all of them have the virtual element. Um, so we have homes from Spring Lake, Grand Haven, West Olive, Holland, Zealand, and then down in Douglas and Fenville. So all along the lakeshore, a dozen homes. You can you know, go see maybe a few of them one night and then a bunch more on Saturday or however you wanna do it. Um, but there's a wide variety of price points um, as well as condos. Like I said, there's a remodel in there. Um, so there's lots of different options to look at and something for everyone to enjoy. It sounds as if, you know, 
to use the old chicken salad uh, analogy, Sue, is the fact that uh, during, obviously, the COVID-19 outbreak, a lot of things have either been put on hold or become virtual. And yet, to a certain extent, maybe it's a blessing to a certain extent for the Lakeshore Home Builders Association because by now making this a virtual event, uh, you might be able to get more people involved than just actually, you know, trying to get them through all the houses in person. That's true. It does. It opens it up a little bit more to, you know, what whatever people are comfortable with. And I know that some, you know, maybe the younger folks are a little bit more into the virtual side of things. So it'll be interesting to see how many visits we get digitally as well as in person. Um, but, you know, it's nice because it's something that is able to go on and happen. Of course, it was delayed. We normally hold it in June. Um, but this has been a really nice experience so far this past weekend. Lots of visitors and people enjoying the parade in person. Uh, June as opposed to September slash October. Uh, obviously, the Home Builders Association, you want to try to get people to buy houses. And a lot of times, it's a little bit easier to buy in the summer because it's a little bit easier to move. Uh, but yet, you know, by the fact that you have to delay what does that do in terms of trying to stimulate not so much sales of these particular homes, but also try to spur, spur sales of homes in general? Well, you know, it's super, builders are super busy. So people that want to build need to be thinking fairly far in advance anyway. So, you know, timing, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's more of a long-term situation where, folks can think about what they would what they would want to do if they wanted to build their own home. So, you know, it's something that people need to start planning well in advance. We're talking with Sue Sherman. She's uh, with the Lakeshore Home Builders Association about the Lakeshore Parade of Homes going on through October the 3rd. A uh, little bit of a respite right now. It'll resume on Wednesday with the hours and I'll you know, I'll do the nuts and bolts for you, <laughs> Sue, on this. One to six o'clock on Wednesday, one, six to nine on Thursday, six to nine on Friday, and one to six on Saturday, $15 uh, for the personal tour. But, you know, is that also charged for the virtual tour as well? No, the virtual tour, there's no charge. Okay. So, therefore, this is not like, oh, we're going to make this now virtual every year. No, no, no. Make sure... Home Build Association, you know, there's, there's some, you know, some costs, some overhead that needs to be taken care of, and you know that helps uh, with the overhead as well. And uh, you got some fine sponsors as well. Tell us a little bit before we go much further about the uh, award winners. The uh, 2020 Parade of Home Awards winners uh, came out uh, uh, over the weekend for Best Curb Appeal, Best Kitchen, Best Owner Suite, and a Vision Award as well. Yes, yeah, so um, one of the elements of the parade is the judged awards. Um, we also have the People's Choice Awards, but of course that has not been announced yet. Uh, but the judges go out when the parade first opens and score the homes. And so those are you know, really sought after awards that the builders like to receive. Um, so there was two price categories this year because of the number of homes. Um, sometimes we break it up into more categories than that. But um, Lee Allen Homes, home number one in Spring Lake, won for their price category. And then home number eight, which is a Meisty Homes uh, in Holland, won for their price category. So it's just fun to see, um, you know, who, who wins those judged awards. Um, as you mentioned, there's best kitchen, there's best curb appeal, um, there's best owner suite, and then uh, there was a marketing award where they uh, showed that they built, they made the home to someone's lifestyle. So we call it the Vision Award. Uh, having a little bit of background, not myself, but uh, my son's mother uh, was involved in timber frame homes. Worked for a company that made homes, you know, well, uh, logs, <laughs> which is something unique in the sense that. It, it's not something regular. It's not something that you would normally see. Uh, sometimes builders need to think outside the box for some of their home ideas there, Sue. Oh, yes. You know, and it's, it's fun that, to see the different trends as they come out, you know, different 
uh, interior design trends or colors. Um, so this year, a couple of the things that I've seen is um, in the kitchen or even any kind of cabinets, sometimes they'll do now two different colors. So maybe the bottom is wood and then the top is white or a color or um, something like that. That was an interesting trend that I've seen. Um, a lot of clean open lines, but then warm elements to bring that, bring in the warmth um, to the home. Wallpaper is back in style and usually in a smaller space, maybe a powder room or just an accent wall. Um, accent walls are very, trendy right now as well, whether it's shiplap or a different color on the wall or some other texture um, with the trim. So we saw a lot of that out there. Um, so yeah, we, it's just, it's really fun to see all of the different um, designs and how the builders use their unique um, abilities. Uh, you mentioned wallpaper, Sue Sherman. Uh, hopefully that wallpaper is just regular muted uh, things. It's not like the uh, 1970s uh, sort of velour <laughs> wallpaper that uh, my son's first house had. <laughs> he had all sorts of problems trying to take that down. Uh, let's just say there are some trends that we don't need to see repeated. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But it is funny, you know, what comes around goes around. So it is interesting to see. But yeah, they're generally, you know, like I said, in a smaller space, just as sort of a pop of curiosity. Yeah. Uh, three, nine, five, 14, 50. If you have a question about homes with Sue Sherman, she is with the Lakeshore Home Builders Association. Again, the parade of homes continuing till October the 3rd. Uh, more information, by the way, we will we'll put a link to the Lakeshore Parade of Homes. We put the description of this podcast on our website at whtc.com so you can get more information about this as well. If you got a question for Sue, we'll take it at 395-1450. Good morning. You're on the line with Sue Sherman. Hello, you're off the line. 395-1450, 395-1450. Just want to remind you, we will be open line after the 10 o'clock news. So for those of you who wanted to call and chat without listening to the radio beforehand, uh, got to listen to the radio beforehand <laughs> to be able to, uh, uh, to be with it, as they say. 395-1450. Sue, let me ask you about the challenges of putting together this year's Parade of Homes within the COVID-19 outbreak, the restrictions that had to be put in, the concerns of some of the homeowners to have their homes displayed, uh, some of the challenges this year's Parade of Homes had to be overcome in order to have this going on, which started last week. Well, of course, you know, in, in the spring, we didn't know what was gonna happen. So we had to, to wait and see what was, what the, restrictions were going to be. But the other challenge was just that everybody had to kind of recover from the shutdown. So get back on track. Uh, at, like I said, the builders are super busy, had to get the supply chain going back again as well. Um, but the thing that's nice about the parade is that, that it is a smaller venue. So, you know, we can just carefully limit the number of people in the home at any one time. People go to different homes. And so, we haven't had much trouble with that, but if, you know, right at six o'clock, a big group showed up, then they just kind of social distanced and waited until the, the group had gone through. Um, the homeowners were great about sharing their homes and, and weren't concerned about that. Um, but of course we're requiring masks and we're, you know, having people stay carefully distanced from one another. But like I said, it's, it's a nice event that is able to go on because of the small nature of the venue. You touched upon it, Sue Sherman, a few moments ago, and I want to sort of uh, expand it a, lo a little bit, uh, speaking for the association. And by the way, uh, the Lakeshore Home Builders Association, according to their statement, nonprofit trade organization, association, representing the residential building industry along West Michigan's Lakeshore from South Haven to Muskegon, affiliated with the Home Builders Association of Michigan and the National Association of Home Builders. Members represent the best of the best in residential construction, remodeling, and repair. HBA members stay up to date on the latest trends, innovations, and code requirements. 
you know, putting the disclaimer in while uh, on this, I will ask you this, Sue. The challenges that the builders had to overcome, and you mentioned a, bit, a couple of them, uh, because of the uh, outbreak, um, partly get back up to speed, being busy, but the other part, and that's something that's not really, really gotten a lot of play, is the fact of trying to get material, because once things started opening up again, demand, I think to a certain extent, overwhelmed supply. It's true. I mean, that, that is one of the one of the reasons why, you know, some of the other states considered construction essential because because of the, you know, detailed nature of all of the materials and that kind of thing, it does take some time to get things back up to speed. So I know that, you know, the guys are really having to, to work hard to make sure that they have all of the items that they need to get their homes finished and we were quite pleased that everybody that was planning on being in the parade was able to finish on time. So that's a real testament to their skills and just working, working through all of those issues. So let me ask you one other question, then we will take our break. Um, development, and some might view that as a negative thing. You know, we want to keep our wildlife. We want to keep our wetlands. We want to keep our farmlands. Well, there's only one problem with that. Uh, people got to have a place to live. Uh, they got to be able to find a place to live. And yes, you can renovate uh, homes, but after a while, you can only renovate so much, you got to build new. So to a certain extent, the association, and I, I think I'm sort of uh, speak preaching to the choir here, the association understands that uh, development is necessary, but properly done, development can enhance a community instead of detract as some naysayers would like to think. Yeah, I would say that's definitely true. I mean, especially now, there's really a low inventory of, of used homes on the market. And so building is even more important now so that we can house our workforce. Um, but yeah, the builders like to, you know, like to Feel that they're enhancing the community and um, and looking at some of these homes and and how they fit on their property. It is just you know a testament to how how great a job these guys do when they're building and developing. How far in advance, Sue, do the Home Builders Association plan its parade of homes? Uh, some events. And I, I, I speak for, like, say, the Tulip Time Festival. Uh, they start planning, like, the week after the festival over and for the next year's festival. What about the Parade of Homes? How much in advance does the Builders Association start planning for the 2021 event when the 2020 event ends on, Friday, on Saturday? Well, we, we will start planning immediately, but um, just some of the, you know, the details, um, the builders, of course, make plans far in advance because they need to time it appropriately. Um, we like for the homes to be unoccupied. So builders that like to, to plan each year, they probably already kind of are thinking in their mind which projects they'll put in in June. Um, we have a committee that works on the parade. So we will meet right away after it's over and just think if there's anything that we want to do differently. Um, and then the actual details of who's going to be in the parade, we, we do that more, just a couple of months in advance. So there's a little bit of a, a lag there. We start planning and then we kind of wait for things to, to break. So what goes uh, into the decision making of which homes to spotlight for a parade of homes? Um, the builders basically decide if they would like to enter or not. Um, and of course, everyone that's in the parade is a member of the, of the Home Builders Association. But they make the decision as to which homes they'd like to put in. They make the decision and, you know, do you have to have a certain, you know, baseline minimum or maximum of homes involved. You don't want to be have so many that people just can't see them all in, in the short period of time, but you also want to have more than just one or two. Right. Um, 
I was very pleased to have 12 in person plus the three virtual this year. I think that's a nice number that you can actually get to all of them. But of course, we there's really no, there's nothing wrong with having more homes than people can get to because then they can just select which ones they want to visit. So we love to have as many homes as we can. And in that regard, having the virtual tour as what it is this year really plays positively to the Home Builders Association because then people can have a choice of which ones they really want to see and look it up close instead of just saying, you know, I'll take, I can only take five or six and then afterwards it's just a, a brain overload and anything else. And what's nice about the virtual tours too is that you can revisit the homes that you enjoyed seeing. So, you know, sometimes after you've seen several homes, it starts to kind of blur together. And so it's fun to, to use the virtual tour to go back and explore things that you saw, ideas that you had. Um, that's that's gonna be fun and that'll be up really until June when the new parade comes out. So people will have plenty of time to revisit and, and enjoy that. Uh, I don't wanna start saying, you know, intellectual property rights and all that, you know, you don't wanna have to deal with Hey, wait a minute. That's our idea. Why are you doing stealing our idea? You want to share good ideas. And isn't it kind of unusual? Maybe I'm, I'm just talking off the top here, Sue Sherman. Um, maybe one year there's a good idea in a home. And then next year in a parade of homes, hey, they not only brought used that idea from last year, but they expanded upon it as well. It's almost like, hey, you know, uh, you're sort of seeing the evolution of a good idea. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting because I think the builders get their ideas from some of the same places. So, you know, maybe they go to the International Builders Show um, every year. And so I think that's how a lot of times the trends kind of carry through and, and you see some of the same things in the homes, even though they were built by different builders. Uh, but everybody has their own spin. And I think that's fun to see is that you can walk in a home and know which builder built that home because you start to, to understand what their little style is. She is Sue Sherman. She is with the Lakeshore Home Builders Association and the Lakeshore Parade of Homes continues this Wednesday from 1 to 6 p.m. Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. and Saturday, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. More information about the homes, virtual tours, how you can be able to see them in person as well, go to lakeshoreparadeofhomes.com. And again, Sue, we'll put a link to that when we put the podcast of our conversation on whtc.com. Sue Sherman from the Lakeshore Home Builders Association, thank you very much for joining us today on WHTC's Talk at the Town. Wish you and everybody with the LHBA well. And hopefully we have a successful parade of homes, not only the rest of this week, but also back at its normal time in 2021. Thank you so much for having me. And that is Sue Sherman on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.